Greetings viewers, uh, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be, well, in relation to the tool haul video that I did a couple weeks back. And I'm just going to be showcasing these four pliers uh, from the brand manufacturer called Tsunoda. And I know in that video I did mention it was my first time buying Tsunoda pliers. Um, and then I realized that... <laughs> In that video while I was talking that I actually had Tsunoda pliers only it was not branded Tsunoda. Now in a month ago I think a uh, uh, tool channel or rather a tool store based in New Jersey uh, by the name of JDT Co. Uh, they featured uh, Japanese flush cutters and so I watched, I can't remember where I first saw it. Maybe it was, um, it's probably CP the Tool Addicts channel. Maybe it was Instagram. I can't remember exactly where I saw it, but I was like, hmm, that awfully looks familiar to my pair of Japanese flush cutters. Now, these ones I bought back in 2008. These were my first uh, uh, pair of flush cutters. And so fast forward to a conversation that I had with, uh, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, it was with CP. Uh, I asked him uh, if he had a photo of the, the backside of it, and he showed me, and sure enough, it was the exact same uh, brand that I have here, uh, number 22, uh, MTC made in Japan. Uh, with a date stamp of uh, 2007. So this was a local purchase for me um, from an electronics store. Uh, yeah, so any case, uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, this is a, this is actually made by Tsunoda uh, and rebranded to MTC. And MTC is a, um, they're a logistics company now. They don't deal too much with uh, hand tools as far as I'm aware. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail about that, but I thought that was an interesting thing. Uh, that, yes, this is uh, my first experience with uh, using Tsunoda pliers. And uh, as far as the tool itself, uh, as a pair of flush cutters, uh, general purpose flush cutters, perfectly adequate. Uh, I remember at the job or at my workplace, my previous workplace, uh, there was a lot of uh, chargers, charge cables, you know, negative, positive, which were put together, strapped together uh, using zip ties. And like out of probably like 80% of them, of the zip ties, which would be like 30 or 40, guess, guessing right there, but uh, they would have they were zip ties that were cut off using, you know, regular dykes. Um, and I've ripped my gloves a number of times. Uh, I'm sure other people have too. And as, a, as an apprentice at that time, I just decided to use these snips and just snip, snip, uh, make them nice and flush so that uh, not only do I sell myself gloves and possibly breaking skin, but others too. So... Anyhow, that's the background story for that. Okay, so before I head on to uh, doing a little uh, demonstration, demo cuts, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Tsunoda, uh, more specifically why I, it took me so many years to uh, actually buy their stuff, with the exception of that one, is um, mainly due to the conversation that I had with the store owner of a tool store in Osaka uh, uh, feature a couple of videos here um, since he obviously dealt with a lot of uh, tradespeople and various different companies uh, he sold many brands and so he had a lot of exposure him also being in the business for 50 years um, his information was quite valuable to me and so I asked him what he thought of Tsunoda, and his reply was that uh, Tsunoda PTC is geared more towards 
the DIY market and not necessarily for professional tradesmen. So I guess I was biased, maybe, uh, you know, maybe skewed uh, in my decision to not uh, try them out. Uh, that kind of stuck with me. But uh, over the course of years, well, more recently, in recent times, like I think it was a couple of years ago, um, or actually even going back a bit more, well, there was definitely Garage Journal members who have bought Tsunoda pliers and they're happy with it. And there was YouTube channels like uh, MD Lee, I think is the first uh, channel that uh, featured um, a variety of Tsunoda pliers talked highly of them. Um, there's also CP the Tool Addict, Autobahn Dan, etc., etc., you know, that have featured Sonoda stuff. And so thanks to you guys uh, and the community that, uh, yeah, I decided to give them a shot. And here we are today. Um, so Sonoda themselves, uh, 1972 is uh, when they actually started making pliers and that makes them a pretty young company and uh, perhaps that is, that's one of the reasons why uh, the store owner at uh, Osaka tool store thought that uh, they are meant for the DIY trade or not only that maybe Tsunoda themselves when they started their company they wanted to uh, Get into the get into a market that was kind of untapped. Maybe they wanted to produce things that were more geared towards the DIY uh, market. Um, so maybe they just wanted to uh, get that pie or that segment, and perhaps that uh, image uh, stuck along for a long time. But uh, I've noticed in the past maybe three years, two or three years, uh, Tsunoda as a company, maybe the marketing division, you know, the executives, maybe there has been a changeover, change up, uh, and they've revamped their website. If you go to their website, it looks very nice. Uh, and as far as marketing, uh, you know, they, they have a storefront uh, on Amazon. So, they're venturing, I think they're looking more outside of Japan as well now uh, to spread their name. And I think it has worked. Um, availability uh, from Amazon, I think even Amazon.ca, uh, Amazon.com obviously. So did I already mention that they're a pretty young company? 1972 is when they started. So, and then in 1991, uh, they started a plant in Thailand and in eight years time they were able to certify that plant in Thailand which produces the TT some of the TTC stuff um, uh, they were certified to be a JIS uh, JIS certified plant so there you have it um, yeah so let's get on to the actual cutting demo uh, these being a flush cut, uh, they would have absolutely no problem cutting things like zip ties, cable ties, with absolutely no protrusion. Oh, yes, it does take a little bit of, uh, okay, take a look at how thin of a sliver shaving that I can cut to make that absolutely flush. Once again, take a look at that sliver, or a thin layer rather. It's almost translucent. Let's see if I can do another one. Maybe uh, use something like this here. I can even go this way. and cut off a thin layer of plastic. So for model makers, uh, I know I was watching uh, Audubon Dan's video uh, just earlier and he was featuring um, a 
pair of pliers from a manufacturer called God Hand. And those pliers have a good reputation for model makers. However, they have a pretty steep price point of, I think he mentioned 50 or $60. However, these ones, uh, I would consider them uh, entry level plastic pliers, perfectly suitable for uh, model making. Although I shouldn't uh, say that with too much confidence <laughs> because I don't actually uh, do model making. But uh, this is what they advertise them for. And uh, for 10 some odd dollars, uh, I think this is a, uh, a good choice as a starter. You don't have to shell out big bucks, give them a shot. Uh, moving on to, well, let's just compare it uh, real quickly to the standard uh, flush guts. Now, now commonly available or conveniently available from uh, JDT.co. These have a much different action as you can see and uh, here. They do cut flush, yes. But uh, they definitely have a different uh, action. Um, in any case. Moving on to uh, these what I would call uh, Japanese style uh, compound cutters. Tsunoda is not the only manufacturer that makes uh, compound cutters in this type of format where you have uh, um, stamped, rolled, uh, I think these are aluminum handles um, and mated with uh, forged cutting uh, heads. Uh, I've seen Chinese, Taiwanese, but I would assume are copies of these Japanese style ones, but uh, there are other Japanese manufacturers that make this style. Um, yeah, let's just jump on to cutting things. I got a like a roofing nail here. It's just going to be in my little receiving. And so, oops. Get that in there. Nice uh, smooth action there. Not too much uh, hand fatigue when compared to a similar pair, at least in length, diagonal cutters, which take considerably a lot more force to cut. It does cut nonetheless, but uh, if I were to cut the ends of uh, nails, you know, like in a roofing, sorry, roofing nails inside a shed or something like that, you know, the ones that are protruding through the, uh, on the inside, I would much rather use these to cut because I can cut them pretty much with, without a death grip. And that was way, way easier. Well, that's uh, a feature of the compound action cutter. And likewise with the end cut, you know, if you're uh, dealing with confined space, now you can cut it flush. There is an offset to the cutting uh, edge, unlike these ones over here, which are more flush against the rivet pin, or pivot pin rather. These ones have an offset so that you can cut uh, longer protrusions. A bit more sound there, but uh, let's take a look at the cutting edge. Focus. Pretty good so far. All right. <laughs> and one last one is this guy here. Uh, let's just say uh, 
you got a finish nailer that protruded on the other back end. These are semi flush cut, so they do get down pretty low. Obviously, not as low as a true flush cut, but these are semi flush cut. Certainly better than uh, than standard end cutters. You can certainly trim it off uh, much closer to the surface. So that's that. All right. Uh, thank you very much for watching uh, till the very end here. Uh, I very much appreciate you your support and uh, thanks for sticking around once again yeah so I will see you in the next video which will be coming up soon thanks guys